Good morning, grade fives. Welcome to our lesson for today. We are going to learn Fareme, family, religion, and moral education. Today, we want to talk about Islam. Islam, a religion called Islam. We are done with Judaism and Christianity. Today, we are going to learn about Islam. And we want to look at the historical background. We want to know how did Islam start, okay? So I'm going to read a text so that as you, I am reading, you take down notes and then we start discussing and we get our questions, okay? Yes, this is about Islam. Islam is a religion founded by the Islamic prophet Muhammad, who was a great religious and political individual. Islam is spread worldwide, but it is dominant in North Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. Within Islam, there are two main groups, which are the Sunni and Shia. So within Islam, they are the Sunni, S-U-N-N-I, and Shia, S-H-I-A. The Islamic supreme being is called Allah, A-E-L-A-H, and their teachings are from the Quran which was revealed to Muhammad by Allah, yes. I can see Kulu there. Okay, the followers of Islam are called Muslims or Muslims or Muslims, okay? Some people can spell it as M-U-S-L-I-M, Muslims, or you can say Muslims, M-O-S-L-E-M. Okay, so if you can choose any two of the ways, that is still correct. So Islam is the religion, and then the followers are called Muslims or Muslims, okay? Islamic holidays and festivals include the Ramadan. Muslims are strict observers of halal, which specifies how animals should be slaughtered and how the meat should be handled to keep it clean. Muslims believe that everything on earth was created for a purpose and should be protected, preserved, and developed. Now I want to look at the historical background. We want to know how did Muhammad come up to becoming the leader and everything. We want to understand that background, okay? This is where your questions come in, where you hear about Khadija, you hear about their daughter, you hear about how they met the two of them, okay? So the founder of Islam is Muhammad. He was born in Mecca in 570 AD. This is his historical background. And he lost his parents when he was very young and experienced the hard life of, of growing up as an orphan. So Muhammad was an orphan. Muhammad grew up staying with his grandfather and later stayed with his uncle. At the age of 25, he was employed to lead Khadija's business of caravan. So Khadija had a business of caravan. She was a business woman. He later married Khadija. Muhammad liked to fast and pray alone. He was a prayerful man. Muslims believe that one night when Muhammad was fasting on the Hira mountain, the angel Gabriel appeared to him. And this marked the start of many messages, which convinced Muhammad that this was Allah speaking to him. Islam was started by Muhammad in about 610 AD, 610 AD. The Muslims believe that Allah revealed himself to Muhammad through several messages which were later put together to make the Quran. So this Quran is made up of messages that were believed that these messages were given to Muhammad himself by Allah. And this is their holy book, okay? So Muhammad was instructed by Allah to convey this messenger, these messages to his fellow Meccans because it was in Mecca. The, oh, there, there is a hand. Yes, John, you wanted to, you want to ask? Yes, I wanted yes. to say when he, he became the leader of Islam, was he still working for his wife? No, when he became, what happened was he firstly met Khadija, right? 
and got married to her. So he was no longer working for him. He was now the husband. You understand? Yes, yes. For example, let's say Sean is a business and Sean meets a nice girl who comes to work for him. If Sean marries that nice girl, is she still going to be your worker, Sean? She's no longer your worker. She's now part of your business as well. She's now your wife. So that's what happened as well here with Muhammad. Thank you, Sean. That is a very good question because we want to understand the background of Muhammad. So, and also I wanted you to take note that Muhammad was uh, younger than Khadija. Khadija was 40 years of age and Muhammad was 25 when they got married, okay? So Khadija was actually older than uh, Muhammad. We see, as we are going to discuss later, take note of these things that I am telling. I can see the boys are saying, ah, oh, because usually the boy is supposed to be older than the lady. But here, we notice that it wasn't a two-year gap, but who can subtract 40 and 25 and tell me the gap, the age gap between Muhammad and his wife Khadija, what was the age gap? Can you subtract for me 40 minus 25? 40 minus 25. And then you tell me the age gap between the two of them. But we hear that Khadija was a good wife to Muhammad. She respected him irregardless of the age gap. Yes, TC, what is the age gap? 25. No, it's not 25, TC. Because if you say 25 plus 25, you get 50. I said 40 minutes. 25. So you have to remove 10 from 25. What will you get? Yes, Sean? 71. 71? No. 40 years and 25. I want you to look at the age game. So you have to subtract and say 40 minus 25. TC, it's say 25. I said remove 10 years. From there. 40 minus 25. 50. That is 15. They the age gap of 15 years. The wife was older than the husband by 15 years. You understand? Okay. Teacher, she was already a grandmother. <laughs> you married a grandmother. You married a ah. grandmother. But if you if you look at yeah. you hear that there was love between them. When you talk about uh, when we talk about marriages of love, when we talk about uh, Islam, we look at the marriage between Muhammad and Khadija. It was said it was a good marriage. There was respect. There was love, irregardless of the age difference. Yes, uh, Jude? Teacher? Yes. These days, people say that it's not allowed for a 20-year-old a girl to get married to a 30 year old man. But a, 10, a 20 year old man getting married to a 40 year old woman. Because he was 25 and 25 is above 60. Uh, he can make his own decisions. He was a young man. He was no longer a boy. Yes, Sean? Is she dead now? Yes, ah, Sean, ah, Mohammed, they died a long time ago. Remember, we are saying, we are talking about at the death of Jesus, Christ, ah, they died a long time. Six hundred years ago, I think someone is still alive. Ah, they died long back, Sean. Long back, long, long back. All right. Um. Um. Thank now continuing. I said Muhammad was instructed by Allah to convey these messages to his fellow Meccans. Remember, we said he used to stay in Mecca. So here, those people were called. He was born in Mecca, and those people were called the Meccans. Okay, the message is emphasized that there is only one God called Allah. So the God that we call God, the Muslims call him Allah. Okay, because the angel Gabriel that they are talking about is the same angel Gabriel that Christianity is also talking about. If we look at what they are saying, that the angel Gabriel is said to have appeared to Muhammad. Okay, yes. Yes, TC? Um, teacher, I've seen that. I've seen uh, that some people will say that. Um, uh, what is it? Um, they say that in this religion, you're not supposed to do this. Like in Jews, you're not supposed to eat pork. 
Yes. Uh, oh. You're not supposed to stay up late. Yes. You're not supposed to drink alcohol. Yes. For Islam is what? Yes, with Islam, you remember with the women, they are cultural ways. Women are not supposed to show their bodies out to other people. Yes, they have that culture. Yesterday, Sean was trying to, he was emphasizing and saying that they only, you only see their eyes out. I'm sure you've seen them in the TV. You can't even see yes, their faces. When we're going face. to, when we're going to South Africa by bus, when we're going to South Africa, we saw a, a, an Islam lady. We only saw her eyes. Yes, the eyes just the eyes. like all over. Yes. She was wearing something, a cloth is just like a cloth is all over black, and you just you just see her eyes. Yes, and it is say that if those women do not comply to that, they it can result to death. Okay, a woman can be killed if she doesn't observe that. They are strict about that. If a woman is seen, a Muslim woman is seen outside not wearing that, not covering her body, she can be killed. Okay, that is something that they should do. Okay. Yes. For many, so, sorry. For men, it's what? For for, for boys. Men, uh, men is what? better. You understand? With the Islamic religion, it's mostly concentrates on the women to say the women must be respectful. They must respect wherever they are going. Okay. It's all about respecting. Okay. All right. Let's move on again. I was saying that there was as a, and also when you keep the questions coming, we're also understanding it as we are moving on. Okay. Yes. I was saying there was resistance towards Muhammad's teachings in Mecca and he and his followers moved to Medina. You remember, uh, we said that he was from Mecca and when he was firstly trying to start doing his teachings, there was resistance, yes. And we hear that he also had followers and he moved to Medina. The Muslims called this great religious journey, the Hegira, the movement of Muhammad and his followers from Mecca to Medina to avoid persecution, okay. Uh, in Christianity, you remember, even Jesus Christ was born in Nazareth and people did not listen to this to say, ah, he's the son of Mary, we know him. He grew up here, what can he tell us? Do you understand? And we see the same thing happening with Muhammad here, so much that he ended up moving from his hometown Mecca to Medina. And this movement was called the Hegira, the journey was called the Hegira, H-E-G-I-R-A-E, -E. okay? The Hegira marks the beginning of Islam, okay? So this movement that he did, like he was moving away from persecution, okay? So the Muslims, they, they honor this thing, this day, because it marks the beginning of Islam. That's when he started to go out and started uh, preaching about Islam and everything that he was told by Allah and all the messages. Yes, uh, Sean? Yes, Sean, your hand is up. Sorry about that. I wanted to finish. Yes, Sean? Okay, teacher, when after Allah um, and Gabriel appeared to the next day, who told the Islams that he was now the leader of, Israel, of the Islams? Yes. Uh, you know what happened, Sean? After when the angel Gabriel appeared to him and he had these messages, he now started to, uh, to preach these messages. Do you understand? When he was starting to preach these messages, that's what made him now to become the leader because he was the one who started talking about it and people started following him. You understand? Yes. It's almost like if I'm the one who starts a business, obviously the business is mine, okay? Because I'm the one who starts to talk about it and everything, you understand? So he was the first one to start talking about it and to tell people about Islam and everything. So there were other people who were resistant to it, they didn't believe him. And obviously it's other followers that we hear that he ended up moving with them to Medina and they created this movement was called the Hagira, the Hagira, sorry, which marked the beginning of Islam. Yes, uh, TC? Was it? Did he just die of a sickness or did he die like long time ago, like crucifying him? No, Something he died. Like that. Um, we are going to learn about that as we go down. He died as well, just like everybody else. He also 
died. You understand? We are going to learn about his death as we are moving on to the end there. I uh, was saying that religion of Islam became well informed at Medina. Muslims follow the example of Muhammad's of worshipping, alms giving and fasting. So the Muslims, they worship, uh, alms giving and fasting. Muhammad became very powerful to the point of being referred to as head of state. He became very, very powerful in Medina to a point of being called the head of state. A head of state is a president. So he was so powerful to an extent of becoming like a president. He was powerful like he was like the president there because of his preaching and because of uh, this Islam and everything. That's how powerful he became. The main sources of Islamic beliefs are from their holy book, the Quran and the Sunnah. Sunnah, S-U-N-N-A-H. I know we know about the Quran. Yes, uh, TC, you wanted to ask? At, at what age did he die? At what age? Uh, okay, I'm coming to that at the end of the text there. I'm coming at the end, but at the 50s there, that's when he died. He didn't live like um, longer, like hundreds and hundreds of years there. Okay, yes. He was just like men. He died, he died. Yes. He died. Yes. He died in the 50s like my grandfather. <laughs> oh, my yeah. father's father. I never even got to see him once. Oh, you never even got to see him. But I hope there are some yeah. stories that they tell you about him that you always have to keep. Yes. yes. They, they help you to remember him. Yes. They help you to remember him. the stories, the pictures, uh, even uh, some of the things that he used to have. So you see, Mohammed built himself a legacy, okay? He built himself a legacy. That's why even up to today, he's still well known as the founder of uh, Islam. As we hear that he was so powerful to the extent of a president, that's how powerful he was. The Sunnah contains the Prophet Muhammad's sayings, actions, and what his companions did. You remember, we know the Quran, right? And then we have the Sunnah as well. So they can say name the two holy books of uh, the Islam. I know the Quran, we know it. We always talk about the Quran. There is now the Sunnah, S-U-N-A-H. This one has Muhammad saying. So it was like, um, um, sort of like a diary of some sort that he was writing down his sayings and his sayings, his actions, what they used to do. Maybe he would write today, day two, we are doing this, day three, we are doing this. So. Yes, it was, it's also the Sunnah. So when he left it behind, it's like a book that also the others, they tend to see what did he do? What was he always doing? What were they on about and all that? So it's also another uh, book as well. Yes, Sean, your hand is up. Don't forget to, to unmute, Sean. I think you can unmute yourselves. There is no device that is making noise. So you can unmute, there's no problem. Yes, we don't have a question. Since, since he's dead now, who who is now preaching? Um, I think just like um, priests. Priests. yes, like the priests, the, the people <coughs> who are behind, like um a, yes, like what RTC is saying. Remember that if you are a founder of any church, you have some uh people that you train. I'm sure he had these followers that he was uh, with. I'm sure he was uh, training them to also what to also preach Islam. And you notice that Islam is widespread; it's world widespread. So, which means what people do normally uh, in religious things, he will have his own branch maybe in Medina, and maybe he would have someone else who is going to be trained to go in another place train this one to go to other places, train this one to go to other places, just like what we do in Christianity, right? You have a church, the pastor is a church, and then he has elders, right? Then you have elders, someone else sent to Harare to open a branch, elders so and so to open another branch, elders so and so to open another branch. That is to help so that if he dies, right, his branch does not, uh, his um, religion or church does not fall. So I think even uh, uh, Muhammad was also doing that because we hear that he was also a brave man. He was brave, he was charismatic. 
he even if he did not learn but he is also well known as a brave man who did so i think when he was doing his thoughts they managed to train some people as well yes sir sean i know to say that um, do some isms go to other church like christian churches and other ones you wanted to say do isms go to other churches like christian churches um no because um they are islam you remember we have different religions right christianity is a religion on its own judaism is a religion on its own hello takunda you are very very early today how are you teacher do muslims oh. also celebrate oh. a yes it is sorry. muslims also celebrate christmas something like christmas oh they don't because christmas is uh remember we we follow christmas because of jesus christ right and muslims they don't believe in jesus christ their prophet is muhammad you understand and even their calendar is different from the christianity calendar okay it is different okay because they also the muslims believe that jesus christ was like a prophet like moses like anyone else they didn't believe that jesus christ was god's son okay so that's where the teachings are, are not the same that's where we contradict each other they they believe that the prophet that was put by god was muhammad and christians believe that the person who was um i don't know who is shelly is bridegroom and then the person who was uh uh put here in place was jesus christ according to christianity do you understand and then the judaism they believe in abraham you see they don't have anything to do with uh jesus christ there because it's only for the new testament do you understand so you have to take note that these religions are different the only thing that makes us to be the same is that we believe in one god okay we all believe in one god that's that's the only thing that uh makes us to be the same hi uh, may you kindly log out and log in again, okay? We are still having the grade five class. So do you understand? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So these, these religions, they are different. They are very, very different, okay? So when I'm telling you the key teachings or we are going to do the key teaching that we are doing. We are going to do a lot of things. Then you understand a lot of things as we move on because uh, they are very different. So there are some holidays that they have that are not the same as our holidays. You see it? Yes. Have I managed to answer you, Sean? Yes. Okay. Let me finish there. Then I'll take your hand. I was saying Islam has two main groups the Sunni and the Shia. Shia is short for Shia Ali or party of Ali. The division started after the death of Muhammad. Yes, Sean was asking about the death of Muhammad. So after the death of Muhammad, there was a division due to different leadership choices on who should take over. Okay. So Sunni Muslims believe that Abu, Abu Bakr, Muhammad's advisor should have been Muhammad's first successor, also known as the Caliph to lead the Muslim state. The Muslims who believe that Ali, who was Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law, was to be the successor are known as Shia. The Sunni observed the primacy of the Sunnah, while the Shia are guided by the wisdom of Muhammad's descendants through his son-in-law, Ali. So you see, when I was saying there are two groups, Sean was asking about the death, who, is, who was leading, who is what, what. So which means after that, after Muhammad's death, right? People started fighting now. Who is going to be succeeding? So some were saying the son-in-law should succeed. Others were saying the right-hand man, Caliph, should succeed. So then it's divided. So which means even in the Islam church, there are two groups. There are two types of Islams. So we have the Sunni Islams and we have the Shia Islams, depending on which uh, side that others followed the son-in-law, others followed the, they followed the, the right hand man. Yes, Atisi, sorry about that. I wanted to finish that um, question. Teacher. Yes. Were they like, you know, when the long back, 
were they like soldiers, uh, uh, Israelite soldiers, something like that? You mean like uh, in, are you talking about the Islam or uh, you're talking about Israel? Islam. Like Islam, like Islam soldiers. Or you mean like in the yes. church? No, those soldiers like in the long back when Jesus was he was was young. Yes. He, those soldiers like the Roman soldiers. Oh yes. Were they there in in Islam? Yes. Remember, um, firstly, TC Islam was founded after the death of Jesus Christ. So after the death of Jesus Christ, that's when civilization it already was now starting as well. So yes, the soldiers were there. It was after it was after the death of Jesus Christ, after everything else, when churches were now there, uh, that's when Islam was also there. When Christianity was already there, Islam was also starting as well. So uh, like after the death of Jesus Christ, after the death of Jesus Christ, like he, a few years forward or days, weeks, something like that. Uh, you are saying, yes, they were there, the New Year's were there, and then uh, people started to celebrate this Christmas, and then now there were people like Muhammad who decided uh, this issue about Christianity, they didn't understand it, you understand? They couldn't understand, you say, oh, Jesus Christ was the son of God, and then they couldn't understand, they thought, uh, they, would, uh, they used to think that uh, Jesus Christ was just a prophet like any other prophet. That's why they decided to follow Muhammad's ways and they couldn't understand the Christianity way that we were using. Um, um, it's now the end so of our lesson. Muhammad was like, oh, Muhammad was like following Jesus, but no. in a way that they understand. No. But he, he will be following, following Allah. He was only, he had his own way and vision of, re, of following things, which was not related to the Christianity way. Okay. All right. We've come to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much. Okay. We are going to talk again about the key teaching so that you keep on understanding it more. Remember, they are different. Christianity is different and Islam is different. We only meet in that one God. Okay. All right. We believe that there is a God. So bye.